Good evening, everybody. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Sanmay Chakravarti of TCS, who is the lead, who is leading the privatization of passport issuance from the private sector. It's also a great honor to have with us Dr. Swati Kulkarni and Mr. T.D. Sharma, regional passport officers at Mumbai and Thani respectively. They are the two most important persons for Mumbai Curse when it comes to dealing with passport related issues and I can't tell you how honored we are that you've taken the time to answer questions and interact with our members. Let me give you some background to this uh, interaction that we've organized today. It was probably two years ago that Money Life's online magazine launched an agitated campaign about many things that were wrong with the way the aut automated passport seva and the seva kendras uh, were working, especially in Pune. Our very feisty consulting editor, Vinita Deshmukh, led this effort. Campaigning for the rights of taxpaying Indian consumers is what Money Life does routinely. The difference this time was in the way that Mr. Tanmoy Chakravarti reacted to what we were doing. He didn't do what corporate India normally does when we write about them, which is to sulk, to rant, to threaten, to send nasty letters or legal notices. Instead, he called us and said, let's have a discussion. And I think it led to a very fruitful discussion, both in Bombay as well as Pune. And pretty soon, within a few months, I mean, who better than Vinita to start noticing that things were changing? Over the last two months, I began to notice that whether it is on Twitter or elsewhere, the only comments that you got about passport was, oh wow, you know, I'm so stunned that the passport has reached home. I think Meera Sanyal was one of them. There's somebody from BJP's IT cell who wrote it. And that's when I contacted Mr. Chakravarti and I said, I think it's time now to talk about how all the automation has helped us because as you know everything that we do is about how it helps we the people especially we the tax paying people because I say we don't have a voice in government because we are not a vote bank or a vested interest. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Tanmay Chakravarti, Vice President and Global Head of the Government Industry Solutions Unit at Tata Consultancy Services and the force behind the passport seva on the private sector side. Mr. Chakravarti who is based in Delhi has over 30 32 years of experience in business development, sales and delivery of integrated IT solutions and services to the government sector. He has led many transformational e-governance projects in India and other parts of the world including MCA 21 where again we interact with, interacted with him after they gave it up. He manages a mass of 165 clients in the government sector with a team of 7,500 associates in 12 countries. He's a Calcutta boy, studied in Xavier's and I am Calcutta. He's also done an executive development program at the Babson College, Boston. Apart from being associated with almost every IT committee of all the major chambers of commerce, I'm not going to waste time reading their names, he's also on the IT task force headed by the chiefs of the Indian Air Force and the Indian Army. He's also on the board of management of the Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University for Women. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our panelists a big hand. And without further ado, let me invite Mr. Chakravarti. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity, Sucheta and Debashish. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Mind Life Foundation that you are the voice of the unheard, and I compliment you for that. Our association, as Sucheta mentioned, started about two years ago when uh, she and Vinita uh, very rightly and vociferously raised the issue of the several challenges that were being faced by passport applicants. Uh, and she, her strategy was right. She just focused on one city so that, you know, once that got sorted out, automatically that would have cascading effect to indeed the rest of the program. So I, I thank her for that engagement. It started, as I mentioned, uh, in a very acidic manner, but as we progressed and we kept exchanging communication over email, tweets, and interactions, brief interactions on the phone, my understanding of money life and the cause that both Devashish and Sucheta believe in increased in respect over time. And I'm here today in front of you, quite privileged to be so, 
sharing with you the learnings of the last few years of this journey of what you can consider to be the program nationally rolled out having a maximum service delivery transformation effect of what government of india has so far done for its citizens if you pictureize the passport scenario of the past and you have veterans sitting on the stage here with me who are partners in this program and they would tell you that passport was really a black box you would just deposit the application and thereafter you would not know the fate of your application from a scenario of that opaqueness to the scenario of this openness has indeed been quite a journey and technologically enabling this whole transformation has been indeed a privilege for us at TCS we are over 4000 people associated with this program and if you add the 37 passport office officers regional passport officers and their staff we are talking about over 4500 people who are involved with this and till date we have already served over 2 crore indian residents or indian citizens who have been uh, given passports through the new system so i am going to briefly touch upon the different facets uh, through a presentation so if you could have maybe just these three four lights off it would be best better for people to uh, have a look at the presentation i'm sorry to have you know uh, thrust a ppt on you but you know we in the technology field feel more comfortable if we have ppt speak king some of the stuff and we kind of superimposing uh, some key points on top of the charts so as you can see here it's it's essentially about creating a single window interface online it's about extending the coverage and reach as i say from 37 passport offices to 77 regional passport seva kendras plus uh, 15 or odd more passport lagu kendras which are in small tier 2 and tier 3 cities around the country it's about bringing the passport touch point to the mobile phone we can actually now start the interaction with the ministry in the subject of passport from your android based mobile phone and now the journey is to take this program to the 180 missions that india has around the world so that the same program can govern passport services even in those missions and high commissions and embassies from around the world so what led mea to do this program obviously growing demand increasing expectations of the people to get better services india was a part of the icao which is the international civil aviation organization and therefore they were overhauling systems and practices and india had to be at par with some of those international best practices there was limited reach limited capability to service this kind of increasing demand and certainly this was one service which was so uncertain you could get a passport in 6 days 6 weeks 6 months or never depending on how lucky you were or how many visits you made physically to the passport office to follow up on your case or you had somebody else to do it on your behalf and of course it had limited scalability the earlier system so all these were factors which drove the external affairs ministry to embark upon this program and what was the mission and the vision that was stated at that time to be able to create a citizen service which provides timely transparent more accessible reliable manner and a comfortable environment through which the processes duly streamlined can deliver the passport using a motivated workforce this is the vision of the passport program as articulated by the government at that time many years ago what did we do we set up state of the art data center which is where we house the application we set up 77 city bank or any of the international bank branch style of passport seva kendras around the country which have a common look and feel you step into any passport seva kendra they all look absolutely the same then we set up a central print factory which is in delhi which can take care of printing of passports which is a fiduciary function which is really not in our control but 
but is in the control of the MEA, Ministry of External Affairs. We fully automated, re-engineered the workflow, the entire process right from beginning of application to issuance of passport works on the basis of an electronic workflow today with no very limited manual paper interventions. So the back office is completely on a workflow. High levels of security because this is an extremely sensitive fiduciary data and therefore even our people who are the front office in the Passport Seva Kendras do not have access to the back office information. Moment the front office customer service executive finishes scanning your application and the workflow goes to the MEA officials, our people have no access to the data and that's the heightened security that we have proposed and we have delivered to this. We run a call center which is today managing about 40,000 calls a day which is operating in 17 languages because we have to cater to the different languages of the regions of the country. 3,500 highly motiv motivated young people who are servicing this program across the country. Tremendous change management because the one thing in humans is to resist change in whatever we do. So it was not just about inject injection of technology, it was about bringing the environment of change to be able to adopt the new practices which were completely different and much more open and transparent as compared to the, the environment of the past. As you could well imagine, if you visualize, no door was open to any applicant to the passport office in the past and today uh, applicant actually walks through the Passport Seva Kendra from beginning to end, meandering through our staff, MEA staff and exiting in a completely open office environment. And that's the change we are talking about, the change in mindset that it requires to be able to accept this kind of people hovering over your table to ensure that you're working and you're delivering to an SLA or service level of the citizens. We have automated the police interface and in fact in uh, the state of Maharashtra we're talking about an average of maybe two to three weeks within which now 27, 28 days is the average right now down from about 75 days in the past through which the turnaround of police verification is getting completed because of the workflow that we have established with the police as well. And of course all the missions, the posts of immigration are all interfacing our database to authenticate whether the passport that they're touching is a bona fide one or not. So the journey, as you can see, the RFP, the request for proposal was envisaged in 2007. The contract was signed in October 2008. The requirements were signed off in June 2009. And we set up in 2010, we started live with four pilot locations in Karnataka. And perhaps because SM Krishna at that time was the foreign minister, so it always happens that way, you know, wherever the minister is, it pilots there. So it started in Bangalore and Karnataka and then it rolled out all over the country. And today we are operational all over the country in, as, as I mentioned, 77 operations from June 2012 onwards. These are some of the volumes, as you can see on the right-hand side, 2.15 crore people have been processed under the new system already, and over 2 crore people have got their passports. The 99.7% is the citizen satisfaction index, which we capture at the exit point of the Passport Seva Kendra through a feedback form mechanism. So people score us based on their service perception and that's the percentage that we are sustaining for some time now and these are some of the other things it is 50,000 people we serve every day in 77 locations 14,600 citizen service hours are available across the 77 passport seva kendras two crore online hits on the portal that's the daily average volume of hits on the passport seva portal two crore plus and 15 thousand plus mobile application hits per day on the mobile applications. These are some of the statistics as you can see over 21,000 calls we handle in a day. 
and 35,000 SMS messages are going out for our, all applicants who tick the SMS service, which gives them a ball-by-ball -ball status of their passport application post their exit from the Passport Seva Kendra till the time they receive the passport. So right now, SMS will go, your passport is under print, your passport is dispatched by speed post number so and so. All this on a ball-by-ball -ball basis, SMSs are pushed to applicants, those who avail the SMS service. So there's no phone calls to make, or first you can go to the portal and keep checking the status of your passport on a real-time basis. On the left-hand side of the screen are photographs and images of the past which I'm sure Mr. Sharma, being a veteran, would be able to relate to. And on the right-hand side is the transformed now, as it is today. So from a situation of chaos and people coming in the morning, queuing up from 3 o'clock in the morning and bunching up, everybody gets an appointed date and a time to come to the Passport Seva Kendra for the interview. An appointment is there. So we are able to schedule and we are able to uh, sequentialize the flow of people by giving them slots every 15 minutes of the eight working hours of the day. So nobody anymore bunches and comes first thing in the morning and crowds the place. They're all coming at the appointed time and date. So that brings order to this whole environment. And I think from the pictures, it's quite apparent. And many of you may have already applied for your passport, so you may have experienced it firsthand as well. These are some of the voice of the citizen. As you can see from Jammu Kashmir, where people are saying that it's the only office in JNK where citizens are taken care in a best way and no doubt every citizen feels honored. This is the voice of the citizen. These are some of the voices and feedback captured from different parts of the country. As you can see, they are talking about the, the experience that they've had. And we have not just stuck where we were in, Ju in, in 2012. It's been a journey of continuous improvement. As you can see from 38,000 appointments a day, we went up to 50,400 appointments today. Everywhere there has been improvements. Melas are being conducted. In fact, Pune, we are conducting several melas and Sucheta talked about what are some of the things that we did to be able to bring down the demand of passports. We worked on Saturdays, the teams worked on Saturdays, appointed and we conducted passport seva melas to cater to the additional load. And all of these measures are continuously being taken to streamline and further improve the experience and bring down the wait time of passports and applicants and bring relief to the services uh, that are being sought by applicants. As you can see from this chart, uh, initially, applications process, which is the blue line on top, and the number of services rendered, we were always lagging. But now, as you can see here, we are up in capacity to deliver services. The red line is going up, and the blue line is kind of plateauing at the moment. So our objective is to stay ahead of the curve. We should be able to service all that the demand is there from the applicants. And that's what we are trying to do here. And the bottom graph shows you the various passport RPO-wise, 37 RPOs, the applications processed and services rendered again the blue and white line more or less we are trying to keep at par with the demand and the supply as well in terms of services this is the chart on the left which shows you the number of days within which you can get an appointment in the first 22 passport seva kendras today you can get an appointment in the next day so it's T plus one in terms of availability. And seven days is 37 passport seva kendras, 14 days is 52. And we are continuously working on the ones which are beyond 30 days, within 30 days, within 21 days. Every one of them, our effort is to keep improving it and bringing it to the earlier slot. So that the number of days lag of an appointment is continuously getting reduced due to our continuous efforts and teamwork between MEA officials who are with us, working with us hand in hand, as well as ourselves, and tweaking the application, rationalizing the workflow processes, doing all that we can internally to be able to improve this number of days of appointments. On the, uh, the one below is the police verification. As you can see here, we are bringing down the police dependency as well. Now, this is a very, very significant external dependency that MEA has on the process of passport uh, issuance. 
police is certainly not under their jurisdiction and they have to they are continuously in dialogue at the field level at the dgp level of every state to see how the police can also be equipped with electronic workflow to be able to reduce the number of days that they take to bring down the police verification process because that's an external dependency of uh, uh, and a part of the process of issuing passports a very important part which cannot be obviated for obvious reasons on the other side as you can see the number of appointments are increasing tatkal is available now within two days normal appointments have there has been a 20 29% increase with regard to december of 2013 and obviously there is a extremely humane approach being adopted for special cases emergency cases illness death and several other emergencies they are always being treated on a priority basis based on the merit of the case and that's uh, uh, consistently happening right across all the passport seva kendras and passport offices so some of the future initiatives planned regular melas and camps we are conducting camps for example recently camps were conducted in daman and diu so that people from there don't have to come to bombay or go to goa to get their passports so camps and are being held in locations where there is no passport seva kendra so the mea is now able to reach the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, and and conduct camps and they are well publicized well advertised and normally all our appointment slots of the camps get filled up because of advanced publicity and awareness that we are continuing and this is a continuous process we are using our teams are working on saturdays uh, working long hours to be able to go to the camps and come back to the regular passport seva kendras in the weekdays so they are stretching themselves to be able to cater to this kind of reach additional appointments have been cut are continuously increasing improving for example bombay we had 500 appointments that was the average in the past today we are at about 20 uh, 2100 or so appointments in the day so there's been a continuous improvement of number of slots that are getting opened up mobile application form is providing greater reach of the uh, system the uh, data pro this is the police headquarter model this is the police verification process is getting more streamlined and it is definitely increasing the speed and online verification with special other centralized databases is like aadhar or pan these are things that are going to further accelerate the whole process of check authentication of the individuals who are applying for passports so as a result in this journey we have had recognition we have had recognition in terms of various awards as you can see some of these are uh, are here in for captured in photographs people are beginning to recognize what passport seva is or has or is being uh, is delivering to its applicants and to the whole ecosystem of uh, the country these are some of our uh, several awards that we got big data award we got the uh, security council of india award for excellence this is a council that is measuring the security maturity of ap large applications managing public data so they recognized us uh, for the security in e governance because we 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 are continuously alive and alert to many attempts being made around the world to sabotage the system nobody wants anything to succeed in india especially people from you know several other countries are continuously attacking our portal to be able to bring it down but touch wood i mean we've not had a single instance of outage because we have a frenetic activity and a team dedicated 24 by 7 safeguarding the portal from any such possibilities we have a chief security officer dedicated for this program which is very unlike many other group, uh, government initiatives where normally internet security and application security is not a very important topic for uh, these programs so this is now finally the reach that you can see here we are in 77 locations around the country and these are the words of the external affairs minister in the last every year there's an uh, there's an annual passport officers conference and she spoke uh, words about the program and the services that are being rendered she has taken keen interest and i must say very significantly the external affairs minister sushma swaraj is a lady 
the foreign secretary Sujata Singh is a lady, the passport officer of Bombay Kulkarni is a lady, and the one who is conducting the session today, Sucheta Dalal, is a lady. So, so this is this is another example of how uh, this equal opportunity environment is opening up phenomenally in India, and we encourage it as much as possible. Now we will quickly cover the second initiative that is also gone live, which is which is going to be of extreme interest to all Indians who are travelling abroad on work, work permits. This is especially, I would like to paint or remind you of the scenario that happened in Libya, let's say, I think two years ago, where we had a large Indian workforce. And the first thing that the foreign employers actually do of the large Indian labor-oriented workforce is keep their passports in safe custody as they are working as a guarantee that they are not going to run away or here go here and there. So imagine a situation like Libya where there was a coup and there were min lakhs of people stranded with no identity. So when the government of India decided to evacuate, they could not establish the identity as to who is the one that has to be chosen to be evacuated and brought back. Because none of the labor there had their own identity. Their passports were in the custody of the respective employers. So that triggered off, and there was a question in parliament as well saying, can the Minister of Overseas Indian Affairs tell the Parliament how many Indians are working abroad? Obviously, the Minister had no answer because there was no statistic and they had no clue how many Indians were actually abroad and where. That germinated this program to be initiated by the Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs, which under the new Modi government has been merged with the Ministry of External Affairs. So therefore, Sushma Swaraj is also the minister of this Overseas Indian Affairs Ministry, which is under Foreign Affairs Ministry right now. And they embarked upon the program called E-Migrate, which is essentially to safeguard the Indian migrant worker who is going abroad so that the government has sufficient information about that individual who is he, what are his passport details, who is going to be the employer, which country, which city, what is going to be his skill that is going to be, uh, he's, he, he will proliferate for earning wages, what are his co contact coordinates, what are the contact coordinates of his kin, should there be em any emergency that should happen, and if the contract is getting terminated, he is returning back to India, when has he returned back to India, who is the new employer, when is he going back, all of this information today is, I am pleased to announce to you, we have gone live with this program and there are 10 protector of emigrant offices around the country and Mumbai accounts for 60% of the migrant workforce of the country. So every year approximately 8 lakh people of India go out in search of work and actually get engaged in contracted work outside of India and 60% of that flow happens from this very city. And the protector of immigrants office in Bombay is the most crowded and the most voluminous office and this is where we have embarked upon this program and what is the objective of this program? It is to bring in tremendous improvement in service to all the stakeholders, namely the employers, the project exporters, the recruitment agents and the immigrants. These are the stakeholders of this program so that activities and services can be provided in a measurable way, in a predictable way and ability to track real time of information is available to the employers as well as the immigrants as well as the recruitment agents so that the democratization of information is total and there is nothing hidden and no, nobody has to go and search for information and you know the cost that you have to pay sometimes to get information from government. So all those costs are also completely eliminated as a result of this transparent process. So what does this do? It essentially is an application that we have developed which is on the portal which is 24 by 7 available today which is managing the information and the workflow of all migrant workers who need an emigration clearance status on the passport. 
because if you want to get a job abroad you need to get an ec stamp on your passport immigration clearance so so that's what it, it does and it's a secure 25 by 7 first in first out basis with online payment facilities of fees so you don't have to go to the office physically to pay the fees of the service online clearance of immigration and demand no physical sticker required in the passports you can track the status of your application through sms and internet very much like the passports and you can search the facility for minimum wage and registered agents employees now there was this was an area of a lot of manipulation nobody would declare the minimum wage and there would be employers recruitment agents exploiting the workforce on this topic of minimum wages so today everything is there is a schedule of minimum wage per country and everybody who gets employment has to have at least the minimum wage so that's the protection for the employee and there's an electronic validation of passport and the insurance policy sometimes in the past they were they figured out that actually the insurance policy was just a dummy piece of paper there was no insurance policy so today there is a workflow with the insurance companies to ensure that every migrant worker is insured under a national government insurance cover that should anything happen to him when he is working abroad at least there is some relief to the next of kin by way of the insurance settlement then at every airport we have set up kiosks which are the facilitation kiosks for these migrant workers when they're going out they can apply for the id card every immigrant uh, worker gets an id card with his status with his unique id number and that's how he's being monitored and there is a grievance handling uh, cell in the portal and most importantly we have added an application which is tracking of application for transportation of mortal remains which is should there be an accident uh, of any of these migrant workers outside side of the country the ability to track the mortal remains to come back to his city for the last rites you are able to apply and track it right through the time that you receive the remains of the deceased so all that is a part of the responsibility of the overseas affairs indian uh, indian affairs ministry so this was the little complicated chart but i'll go through it very quickly these were the before e migrate steps and there were many steps and the more number of steps and the more number of physical interfaces you can well imagine the more is the consideration that you have to give to get the work to be done so the objective of any system is to disintermediate government with the people disconnect and reduce the physical interface between the government and the people and that's one of the ways in which you can completely tackle and take head on corruption so technology gives that opportunity to de-layer and disintermediate government disintermediate government with the citizens and as you can see in the new system these three steps are completely eliminated they are not required anymore so no stickers in the passport no handover of the passport to the immigrant because okay i am going to give you your passport but you know this is the consideration that you have to give to me all that is gone so you don't need any interface to be depending on somebody to give you the passport and now it's a completely faster transparent and less paper process than it has been in the past these are some of the benefits that are coming faster processing at indian missions at the protector general of immigrants office as well as the protector of immigrant offices the validation of passport and the insurance policy to ensure that it is a bona fide insurance cover that the migrant worker has it's 24 by 7 you can track the application you are eliminating the printing of immigration clearance stickers which is a activity which is not required anymore you are having a online payment of processing fee and you have information dashboards and online report generation capability which gives the national picture so how many people applied for ec certificate yesterday how many have got it today what's the pendency everything is now available in black and white this has been the journey of this program we started in 2011 we required captured the software requirements we set up the it infrastructure we designed and developed the system we trained the staff all over the country and in may to september we went live in delhi first which was the pilot and we made it operational and all the 100 poe offices in all over the country are today live and operational since september 2014 
these are some of the statistics as you can see here as you can see the marked improvement in productivity from september onwards in all the three activities whether it is demand approved vacancies approved and emigration clearance granted you can see the result and outcome of the productivity of the e migrate system and the poe offices as a result of the transformation system that has been put in place total number of ecs granted is 1,54,634. total vacancies are about 8 lakhs as i told you that every year about 8 lakh people are going outside of india to in search of work or on work permits or on work contracts all over the uh, all over the world and that's essentially what it is so i just wanted to touch upon these two very important pillars of service delivery transformation that the ministry of external affairs in partnership with tcs has achieved and it is for the world to see very recently we had 37 british parliamentarians who came to delhi to have a look at the passport seva kendra and we all hear and read in the press about the mess that there is in the uk passport system and they actually the parliamentarian said that you have now more end to end digitized processes than we have in the united kingdom so that's what we are capable of as a country to deliver and the more and more opportunities we get we i believe should use the it prowess that we are known for as a country to bring the benefits of it to our own people within our own country thank you very much for your attention